Hello and welcome everyone to this episode of People's Health Dispatch. Today, we have two very eminent guests, Yogesh Jain and Sara Nabia. I'm going to introduce both of them in some time, but we are going to discuss a very important, very timely publication, a book, COVID-19, A View from the Margins. It's a volume of essays documenting the experience of people from different walks of life at the front line of COVID-19 response in India. This volume is a narration of the response as viewed by, the, by current former civil servants, doctors working in rural urban areas, journalists from across various parts of the country, and other uh, parts of the world, various public health practitioners, some very seasoned, some new, economists, lawyers, and it is about the millions of battles being fought at the margin against COVID-19. Welcome, Yogesh. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Let me introduce uh, both of our guests here. Yogesh is a pediatrician by training and a practicing public health physician. He's one of the founding members of Jan Swasta Shahiyo, where he has worked for 20 years. Based on his lived experience from rural Chhattisgarh, a state in India, he has advocated from provincial to international levels to highlight the causes and burden of the poorest in the world. He has served in multiple health commissions at the national and international level. Welcome again, Yogesh. Yeah. We have with us also the co-editor of the book, Sara Nabia. Sara studies public health and business at the Bloomberg School of Public Health John Hopkins University. She has previously worked in advocating for HIV prevention for the marginalized populations, especially vulnerable women at the grassroots and national policy space. Welcome, Sarah. So let me start with uh, Yogesh, huh? and then uh, we can, uh, of course, all of us can uh, join the conversation. Yogesh, in the introduction of the book, you quoted Amartya Sen. You say, and I am quoting, what we can observe depends on our position vis-a-vis -vis our object of observation. It seems views from the margin is very central to uh, this book. Why do you uh, feel, why did you feel the need to uh, see COVID from the margin? You know, uh, the fact that uh, our observations are different uh, depending upon the position that we have in, uh, in relation to the object that we are observing uh, is something uh, which is very commonsensical. And at least in our Indian tradition, we knew about the, the, the probable elephant where someone felt the different parts of an elephant uh, from different places. But also, when you stand a little at the margins, you're able to observe the whole, the, the, the more complete sort of, you know, uh, object as a, if you were to, if you were more central to the, uh, to the object of observation, you would only see a part of the, uh, of the whole, uh, you know, if the object was large. So in this case, I've, and, and this has been also borne out by the fact that the people who uh, ran the services uh, for the, who responded to the pandemic as it, as providers, had a different view, you know, there would be celebration about the technology, information technology that was done, or the public health measures or the law and order measures that were that were sort of, uh, you know, uh, unleashed in a sense, as well, but, you know, those people who decided often did not serve the consequences of those of those decisions, as it is, as happens in a place where, um, where people are not uh, represented in decision making uh, for, for, for themselves. So I thought that this was uh, this to get the views of people who were at the margins of society around any axis that we can talk about, whether it is uh, 
uh, in an unequal society, whether it is the gender or the uh, geography or uh, your uh, social class or your uh, uh, your pecking orders in terms of food availability uh, and other axes of marginalization, to get those views would be a critical thing to see actually what uh, to get the views uh, of the pandemic. In fact, uh, recording of the documentation of the pandemic as it mattered to the people who were away from the positions of power, and that would be the that was the reason why we felt that this was needed uh, to be documented. Absolutely, uh, Sarah, your thoughts on this? Uh, anything you yes. want to add here? Yeah. Yeah. So you see, um, at baseline, our society is unequal be it for India, geographical, um, where you are placed geographically is a big factor on, you know, what you have access to. And then there are other very important factors such as, you know, what religion you follow, um, what gender you identify as, what is your income level. All of these are important determinants of the level of healthcare and the level of uh, social security that you enjoy. And I feel us as a society are accountable to each and every person in our um, society, irrespective of where they stand on all of these different indicators. So it is important to document and hold ourselves accountable as to how did we serve the interests of those who were disproportionately burdened. And that is why a view from the margins was so important. Like, what do we usually see in uh, peer reviewed literature? We see of, um, you know, the technological advances that have been made, you know, the latest drug, what has been the scale of the testing, but how often do we talk about how access to these things that we are celebrating is actually reaching the people, reaching the last mile? Um, and somewhere this book is an attempt to address that gap, speak of how we did um, in that last mile. So um, in order to prepare for future pandemics, it's important that we remember, record, and celebrate not only our technological and scientific successes, but also be mindful of what are the efforts that we made to reach each and every person who all deserve the same level of care. Um, and um, that is why you know, this view from the margins was important to remind ourselves of how we did and how we can do better. Absolutely. And this pandemic time, we have seen how inequities and the structural uh, inequities in the society, how they have come out in open so glaringly. And you, the, the, you know, when I'm looking at uh, the book, it's such a mammoth task, bringing so many people together at this very crucial juncture. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really uh, an incredible uh, work that you all have done. Uh, Sarah, uh, let me start with you here. Uh, how did it all started and how was your experience uh, in doing this, bringing all uh -oh. of, uh, it was definitely a mammoth exercise and an amazing learning experience. Um, but I think one of the main, for me as an editor, um, one of the X factors of this book is it brought together something around 70 odd authors. We have 35 chapters and a total of 70 odd authors. And um, I think uh, being able to mobilize and get people to rally around the cause that that credit solely goes to Yogesh sir's, um, you know, ability to kind of be the pipe piper and get people to believe in what we were doing. Yogesh, your thoughts, your experience, your, how did you manage to bring all of this together? Well, uh, this book took shape, uh, took birth, uh, at the, uh, the idea took birth uh, at the end of the first year of 2020, mm -hmm. when we had already seen the whole of society response at least uh, through the print media and through other discussions that were happening. And if, if you remember, that was a year that, you know, we used to all have so many webinars going on almost yeah. every day. And this was a time that we realized that, you know, uh, that uh, what you heard from people uh, or in even these webinars was largely the uh, mentioning of what the state was doing uh, or what the uh, other, you know, so-called 
people in power, uh, whether it's you know technical power or uh, socio-economic power, were doing. And uh, but so it, we decided when we decided to get the, the views of the people or the the impact of, of the people at the margins. We decided to look at uh, for uh, authors those people who we feel who we felt had a con- connection with the people. You know, often uh, it's because um, English uh, the the language the uh, the medium was considered to be English for the for the writing. We had to have uh, we uh, had to have people who would speak up for the people at the margins and not only mm. the people who were at the margins. Mm. So uh, thus we t- took uh, people from. Uh, who had connect uh, at at a physician level with their patients or uh, with um, uh, public health managers or you know administrators who were uh, dealing with the uh, the uh, with their own departments or you know the people uh, economists who are doing field level research or uh, trying to collect views as well as a lot of health journalists were also contacted because we felt that they were they had an uh, eye and the ear to the ground and therefore, you know, uh, those were the things that we put together. We had a, at the, we had drawn up a list of forty-five odd authors, or yeah. uh, of a few of few of which, you know, finally did not, you know, so-called deliver their, yes. their pieces, yes. which is which happens in most books. But I think it was, uh, uh, I would say, um, it was a matter of great, um, uh, you know, happiness that uh, almost everyone whom we had contacted. Agreed to, you know, very, uh, very uh, graciously, and I would say with enthusiasm, you know, participate in writing of this thing, and to accept changes that we suggested. And uh, they, uh, we did propose uh, to them uh, specific questions that they would like that they that they should focus on in their chapter. And I think the most of them measured up uh, uh, rather well. Yeah. Uh, the, it shows the commitment. Uh, the, it, it takes a lot of effort to bring in rigorous evidence at this very challenging time. You know, let us uh, now get into a bit of content of the book. We have limited time, but you know, one of the ideas that you have put forward here, uh, you give us this term syndemic approach to understand COVID-19. Uh, Yogesh, would you like to uh, elaborate on this because this becomes one of the very central theme of uh, the book. I feel so. Uh, we know that you know uh, uh, the the uh, the pandemic or the epidemic uh, across the different continents of COVID nineteen was only one stream of thing that was happening, but it was uh, its impact and its uh, its uh, form was uh, determined by this by uh, the other social economic and political forces that that govern any disease manifestation as is mentioned in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the first uh, as a as a quotation from Wilco who said uh, you know um, epidemics are uh, are manifestations of mass disturbance in, in our lives and, um, and so the the syndemic approach which you know uh, uh, Richard Horton of the Lancet has also said very strongly for that to be able to understand the impact of this pandemic, we, we cannot sort of just discuss the biomedicine of uh, this pandemic uh, or uh, the responses to that. Uh, but we need to understand the pinnings, uh, the underpinnings of uh, the non-COVID illnesses that 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 uh, affect afflict us, but also the social and uh, economic and political uh, inequities and uh, forces that that determine how COVID pandemic would you know uh, would uh, would manifest itself and impact on people so this approach we uh, we uh, you reuse the word syndemic to explain this pandemic if i may say absolutely and uh, you know in terms of method also i you have uh, mentioned it very uh, categorically that you wanted to bring in uh, 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 people's history uh, historical narrative uh, into this huh? the, and the, at a time when our governments across the world particularly also in India where the, uh, there is a lot of effort from the state to change uh, our history uh, erase some of the historical facts when you bring in uh, such a, a grounded method it, it speaks a lot I think this is a very important uh, element of the book. You, know? uh, you, you. I'm quoting uh, here. Uh, often, recorded history is the memory of states, perhaps meaning the memory of 
those people in power. States and nations are not people and communities. Accounts in the book are meant to create a people's history of the COVID-19 pandemic, seen from their point of view. Uh, how did you uh, think about it? Why did you find it impo it's important to bring in people's history here? So uh, I would say here again, uh, and Sarah might add later, yeah. uh, who's a student of history, uh, you know, but I, for me, history is, uh, uh, is basically a struggle of memory against uh, forgetfulness, you know, so that we can uh, use that in our, uh, in our future. And we felt that the memories of this uh, pandemic that may be useful for people who study the, uh, the problem later, why, or, you know, uh, would be, uh, uh, would require the version of the of what happened in the pandemic of the people rather than of the people who were uh, the providers or the people in power and thus um, uh, uh, like you know uh, Howard Zinn did it for the people's history the of the of the indigenous people uh, history of United States was different and you know the history books are written by people of who are in power that is that goes down uh, the lines so we thought that it was it was it was our uh, it was our uh, our onerous task, and I would say uh, something that we pleasure with we did we did we did with pleasure that we get the history as the people of the of the pandemic uh, viewed from by uh, as people saw it on their own or as people wanted to record it for the for posterity from their point of view rather than what uh, the governments and the so called uh, uh, technical establishment were uh, would be explaining the so about vaccines or about testing or about about treatment or about um, uh, you know the the laws that we were that were unleashed on us the changes in the in the public in the state in the welfare program that we had all had to be seen from the point of point of view of the people rather than from the people who made those changes sarah over to you yeah so i think i i pretty much concur with um, what uh, was just said, but I'd also like to add that for me, I see the value of history increasing as time passes, right? The more ancient it becomes, the more valuable it becomes. Because when you're, when you're in this very unusual, high-paced situation that COVID-19 has been, how much are we really dissecting, synthesizing, and learning from? Um, I'm not sure a lot. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how very well we are introspecting right now. But the reason why it was important to have this historical record is we would be doing a disservice to ourselves if we don't learn from this. And this is an attempt to create that record so that we would think that the books really served its purpose if somebody 10 years later picks it up and says, you know, this is what we did right and this is what we did wrong. And, um, you know, we have to learn so and so from it and take this forward. So so we, we want this book to serve as that account that will help people introspect and push us to kind of think and also accept things which may at times be uncomfortable, but what has really played out from this entire pandemic experience. So, and... Um, you'll see the last section of our book, which is more like field notes from COVID-19. That's why we've made a very um, intentional attempt to include people's stories. Um, you know, the first two sections, the first two or three sections are more technical that way, you know. Um, though we've taken, you know, people's perspective as to how they experienced testing, what was their experience with treatment. But the last section typically caters to stories because stories can be very powerful when you're trying to take a historical record. Um, so that is why probably um, recording of people's history was so important. Um, and we hope that its value will increase, um, you know, the further we move away from this. I'm sure, uh, thanks for bring, also bringing in the structure of the book, but I'm very sure that as public health uh, students, we have to, uh, practitioners, we have to refer to your uh, very uh, well-documented historical narrative uh, from people's perspective. 
of covid uh, but any any thoughts how are you planning to um, uh, 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 like launch the book and have the release what are your dissemination ideas uh, sara and yogesh anyone please so let me go on first i would say the book is already there in uh, in circulation and we did not uh, go for any formal uh, you know uh, formal release in a sense we might have some sessions where we can probably read some sections from the chapters uh, together with some of our uh, uh, co-authors uh, as time passes in in different sites of the uh, different places in the country as well as uh, internationally because since you know this is this book is going to be useful for people outside india also uh, since you know i don't think uh, other countries are rolling in equity and uh, justice so we you know those would be useful there also i'm sure that our authors are also looking for to discuss and uh, you know publicize the book uh, among their uh, ecosystems thanks uh, sara any last thoughts any anything you want to add here no um just that i think um, pretty much um, everything on the um, you know how to get the book is covered but um, to everybody who listens to this i think um when reading the book um I, you know it i would encourage readers to keep in mind that it is a first of its kind attempt not only to document a people's history but it's it's sort of an of the people for the people by the people book on covid in india and um, that is an incredibly special thing um about this book you know it's about the covid experience in india written by indians um you know for indians so it's 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 a you know it's an attempt um it's a humble attempt to kind of um you know kind of be our own storytellers and not have the story told by you know other people because our experiences have been very different so when reading the book you'll see that we've tried to kind of retain a lot of that ethos um a lot of times intentionally we did not want an overly sanitized version of it because ultimately i feel um that is what kind of makes it so special um to me as an editor um so yeah just just that's kind of just one thing about the book indeed it's very very special and the way you put it of the people by the people and for the people i think with that note let us uh, close uh, today's conversation thank you so much for yogesh sara for speaking to us and uh, giving your time it was a, such a fascinating conversation thank you uh, please read the book and also please uh, uh, subscribe to people's health dispatch newsletter we are producing every fortnight and we are all almost completing one full year so um, thank you again uh, to all of you